heavy metal galaxy far, far away. The spirit of heavy metal, the fox god, chose two newly born podcasting spirits, Travis and Anna, and summoned them to the metalverse, where an unknown future awaits. To help guide the spirit of baby metal traverse across the world. Join them as they discuss the latest news covering baby metal and the entire Japanese heavy metal and hard rock scene. Trap Metal, this! Nanametal, this! And we are the Fox the God, Fox God Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> all right hello and welcome really cute. all right hello and welcome into episode two of the fox god podcast the only podcast that pleases the fox god tonight today's discussion talking about legend mm night night 20 and night of 21 as well as the new baby middle interview that was released in japan well we're we talking about some quotes that sue said because i think she said some really interesting quotes in that interview uh, anyway, so welcome on in, uh, Nana. I just gotta ask. I just gotta ask your thoughts. What are what are your thoughts on both of these nights? I cried the whole concert. Like it's pretty obvious they like loved it. Like the set list were incredible. I think it it was the best set list they did so far. For which night though? Because they had uh, different set lists for both nights. We can actually for the first night. It's my favorite night. Yeah, because they had uh, both nights had different set lists. Uh, some of the songs were the same. Like okay, the night of twenty set list, it was it started with BB Metal Death, Migitsune, Da Da Dance, Shanty Shanty Shanty, Kajar Kajar. You can do this. <laughs> Kajar. Damn it! How do you say it? Kagero. Kagero. Kajero. Maya. Yes. BXMC, Syncopation, Monochrome, Metalli with the Kami solo, which is... Oh, oh, oh they had Kagero with the Kami solo intro. They had Maya, BMC, Syncopation, which is one of my favorites. Monochrome, Metalli with the Kami solo intro, which is every time they do Metalli. Uh, Gimme Chocolate, Doki Doki Morning, which I'm shocked that returned. Um, the one, and then you had Lore, and then you had Momo Banger, Headbanger with Momo taking over, and then they ended Night of 20 with Road of Resistance. The best night so far. And then Night of 21 featured BB Malt Death again. This time, they were crucified. And then number two was Distortion. Number three, Papaya. Number four, Elevator Girl makes its return. Which I, I I didn't see that one I didn't see that coming back. Uh, it was like Jesus coming back. Actually, changed my life. And then five, we had Yava coming back with the classic Kami intro where they're where they're coming up on the platform clapping. Oh, this was so cute, actually. Like I didn't anti- like like I didn't anticipate Yava to come back. I certainly didn't anticipate the classic. Kami in Kami band intro to come back with that song. The Kamis are ca- coming back with the intros. Like, come on, this is so fire. And then six, you had believing. Seven, brand new day. Eight, starlight. Nine, karate. Ten, metalli again. So, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, for both concerts were the same because ten was metalli with the Kami intro again. 11, Gimme Chocolate, 12, Doki Doki Morning, uh, 13, The One, and then 14, you had the biggest surprise, I think, out of both nights. Uh, yes. Momotaro? Metataro? Uh, How cute that was. And then, <laughs> and then not ending on Road of Resistance, but said ending the concert on Arcadia. Yes. Okay. How beautiful. So, out of those two set lists, you would say Night Twenty, you think, is the better one. Yes, it's my favorite. I would, I would have to agree with that. Any reason why it's your favorite? Oh my god, my favorite song is on Night of Twenty. Kagero is my favorite song. So when it started, I feel like faint. I was almost fainting on my bed, almost like 
dying, having a heart attack. And the intro, like, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting the intro. Yeah, I don't think I was expecting the intro for that song because I, I don't remember. I don't remember if the rumors were if that song was if people heard that song sound tested because people heard da da dance being sound tested. People heard what was the other one? The, Metal Kingdom. Metal Kingdom being tested, and uh, there was one more. Maybe it was that song uh, that people heard being tested. But you know, a couple, you know. Uh, a couple. Of, it was like any more thoughts on it before I jump right in. I when I when I saw the tweets of people saying that they were sound checking Kageto, I had like the biggest heart attack. But for me, why they were sound checking Metal Kingdom? Uh, like Metal Kingdom wasn't at the set list at all. I don't know if they were sound. I mean, these these are of course unconfirmed reports of them sound checking these songs i i could have you know i i have no way of confirming whether or not they actually did sound check uh these songs it's, i assume they sound check we got they got two of them right uh but i don't know if they sound checked no kingdom or not there it was just a bunch of unconfirmed reports uh i mean they before back during the american and european tour they would sound check songs that they wouldn't perform for a couple of nights yet so maybe metal kingdom makes its comeback uh, end of March for Legend Forty Three. Yes, maybe that. Uh, That's. But yeah, they did sound. But yeah, I mean, it was just unconfirmed that they sound checked Middle Kingdom. So I have no way of, conf of confirming that. All I know is what is what they did on the set list. So, uh, I don't. Know. My thoughts on our concerts were it was a lot of surprises. A lot of surprises coming back. I mean. A lot metal gal. I mean metal galaxy. Metal the metal the metal galaxy era kind of came back in full swing with uh, yes. Starlight coming back, Brand New Day coming back. Of course, Brand New Day came back uh, during the European tour as mm -hmm. as well. But uh, Brand New Day, Brand New Day now getting a new pro shot with Starlight, Elevator Girl. I mean. Da da dance. I mean, Metal Gal. <laughs> the Metal Galaxy air is back. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, while Metal Resistance is still kind, of, Metal Resistance, Re Metal Resistance kind of had a strong, sh strong showing over the weekend after just being dead for like the entire year. Other than Road of Resistance, <laughs> Metal Resistance has just been dead. Yeah, they forgot about this <laughs> album. I think. Like Yava came back, which was huge. Uh, I mean, the, they perform the one which they always do at their big shows anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Metataro, well, that was that. That, that was, was a big surprise. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Yeah, that was a shock of the night. That was a shock of both nights. I mean, we knew we knew one one of the nights would be headbanger with Momo taking over Momo banger. Uh, I thought it was I thought Momo we thought Momo banger Momo banger was gonna be both nights. It was only one night. Uh, it was different, really different. And then, uh, but we didn't have yeah. like any new songs like we had on no. the other legends. No, no. Uh, and then before before we jump into that, uh, the other song that came back was Syn from Metal Re from Metal Resistance was Syncopation. I mean, I know that came back during the yes. European tour, but Syncopation's finally getting another pro shot. Uh, last pro last pro shot was 2021, 10 Baby Metal Budokan, and that didn't even make Spotify. That you had to buy the Blu-ray for in order to listen to it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah. When comparing this concert, okay, let's compare this concert to both Legend M for Moa's 20th birthday, and then Legend S Baptism XX for Sue's 20th birthday. Uh. Okay. Okay, the similarities are they were both they were all three of them are two day concerts. Mm -hmm. um, um, both had like a similar length set set list. Uh, mm -hmm. But both set but both nights were different, which was different from the last two concerts because the last two both nights were because last night for Legend M and then Legend S both nights were the same set list. This time the set mm -hmm. the set list were different. Uh, 
Western Kami band of uh for Legend MM. I think the and then the which the the other two legends were the Eastern Kami band. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, the similarities. Uh, I mean, we didn't get. We didn't get new outfits. Uh, like the similarities, like kind of end there. Uh, Legend MM will be broadcasted in movie theaters across Japan, just like uh, Legend M was broadcasted in movie theaters across Japan. So they're doing the same thing for that. They're broadcasting both nights of Legend MM in movie theaters across Japan around pretty around the similar dates. It's going to be streamed on Wow Wow. Uh, so like. One's gonna be by the time it goes reaches, you know, it's like within a day or two of when it's in a movie theater in Japan and when it streams on Wow Wow. Uh, other than that, oh yeah, they had the special treasure, which, the sacred treasure, which was a uh, wristband with hat that which featured both two M's on it that lit up. How cute that was! Like that was pretty. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Now it lit up. What it lit up? White for monochrome. It lit up pink for for Momo souls. For, yeah, for Momo when she did a headbanger and when she did Momo Taro. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. But I, I gotta say, I gotta say, it was a bit. I'm gonna take my headphones off. I gotta say, it was both nights were. I, this concert was a bit of a letdown. Like I want to say. Like, compare it to like the Legend M and the Legend S. It was like there was something. It was a bit of a. It was not. I'm not talking about the songs. I love the songs. I'm not talking about Momo Metal. I'm not talking about like anything like that. But just the production was a bit of a letdown for me. Just because we didn't get no new outfits. Uh, you had the traditional baby metal stage like we always do. Like oh, we had we had the moving stage like we always did, but we had no stage props. Uh, yeah, only the big, the big screens. Yeah, only yeah, only the big screens, uh, because, I mean, we had a better stage for Baby Metal Begins back in April, because that was a pretty cool yeah. stage, and then Baby Metal Returns. Yeah, and I was a pretty good stage too. Yeah. yeah, and then Baby Metal Returns, we had the Thrones that kind of looked like they were inspired by Game of Thrones, uh, for Metal Kingdom, and we had like the. New Metal Kingdom outfits, so they had a production for Metal Kingdom, just uh, for for Metal Kingdom for Baby Metal Returns, but they didn't have really much of anything both these nights. I mean, okay, so night of twenty, I thought you know our predictions were okay. If we go through our predictions, our predictions were uh, we we were gonna get Headbanger both nights. That didn't happen. We got headba- we got Headbanger one night. Our predictions were fourteen to fifteen songs in a set list, which was. Just going based off every show they've ever done, they did 15 songs. Yeah. Um, we predicted the Western commies because there was no sign of the Eastern commie bands coming back. That was that, that was the simple stuff we predicted. But we also predicted Black Baby Metal to return and a new costume change. And that didn't happen. We also predicted a new song. And that didn't happen. Pretty uh, insane predictions. Let's be real. Uh, Pretty insane predictions. Yeah. I, I I will agree that the Black Baby Metal coming back might be a little insane. The one I didn't think was insane was a new song, because Legend M featured a new song. They featured Shine with Moa on acoustic guitar, and that was a new song. And at, for the time, and uh, Legend S featured In the Name of, which was a new song. So both of those concerts had new songs. So it wasn't insane for us to predict that. Maybe Legend MM would have a new song. I thought I thought it would. I thought it would. I you know I predicted. I thought it would. I thought it would. Like I like the like the crazy thing I predicted was since Momo has a bit of a K-pop background, I thought maybe just maybe they'll just bust the doors wide open and uh, have Momo sing a K-pop song. I thought that was gonna happen, and it didn't. Thought, and it didn't. You know, yeah. I predicted. I I said I said last time that night two is gonna be the wild night. And it really wasn't. Yeah. Aside from aside from the set list, I mean, if the set list for both nights were amazing, of course. Uh, of course, I did prefer Night of Twenty more, just because it had every song I love. It had Momo Banger, Headbanger is my favorite song of all time. 
it had Syncopation, my second favorite song of all time. It had Doki Doki Morning, which is one of the best songs to ever hear live. The live versions of Doki Doki Morning are a lot better than the studio versions, and I love the live versions of that song. And then it had uh, Maya from the other one, which I also love. Monochrome, I also love. Da Da Dance was a shock. I also love that song. Uh, shanty, 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 I also love. So it was just a... Night of 20 was 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 the night of the songs I really like. Yeah, for me too. Um, Same. We predicted like a big castle for Momo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was insane. <laughs> yeah, I pre- I remember. Yeah, I remember. I predicted like it's gonna start. There's gonna be like a big castle, a big staircase. Momo's gonna be wearing a big pink dress, just slowly walking down the staircase, leading right into her her solo song. But like the thing that bo- uh. <laughs> and the thing that bothers me is they had nothing to. They had nothing. They had. Right, she came from like, the sky to Momo Banger and Momo Taro, yeah, but that nothing was it. else. There was like, there was like no special entrance for her. I mean, they at least had Moa fly in on wings to start Legend M, and yeah. then this, they had nothing because the first night started with Baby Metal Death, normal. We only had the lore. Yeah, normal Baby Metal Death. Yeah, the only thing they had was the lore. Um, it's just like. No, like I, I thought they had something. No, and the lore I found, I don't know. The lore I found a bit lackluster. Uh, mm-hmm. to begin Legend M M. Now I don't know if the lore, if the intro lore for Legend M M Night of Twenty and Night of Twenty One was the same, because I can't find video of the Night of Twenty One lore. I found vi- I found the Night of Twenty lore and Momo Banger lore, but not Night of Twenty One lore. I don't know why, but I did find Momo Tara lore lore. We'll get into that. So, all right. So here's the lore for Night of Twenty. A long time ago, in a I gotta do the voice too. A long yes, time, you got. A long time ago, in a heavy in a heavy metal galaxy far, far away, the spirit of heavy metal, the Fox God, chose three newly reborn metal spirits and summoned them to the Metalverse, where an unknown future awaits. But do you guys remember that day, that time, this place when BB Metal departed to the Metal Galaxy? These three Metal Spirits, they have already met at that time. Whether this encounter was by coincidence or by fate, there's no way anyone could know. Only the Fox God knows. Are you ready to headbang? Now is the time for Legend MM with Baby Metal. I mean, so it was their normal concert lore. Yeah, just, normal concert lore. Just changed to say that, oh, that these three metal spirits met each other and no one knows how they met each other. Well, it's like, well, it's like we kind of know how they met each other if, if you're a real fan, but like. <laughs> yeah. Because they're part of Sakura and Gakuin. But, like, I, I don't know. I found that lore kind of lackluster. Like, we got the better lore later on. But, like, in the intro, just started with them walking up on stage doing Baby Metal Death. Like, ugh. I was I was expecting something bigger for the entrance, actually. But when I was watching the concert, I thought the first night they were, like, crucified. But... When I was watching, like, the live stream. The live stream wasn't that good, though. We didn't got to see the girls on stage at the first music. Um, I was, like, I was expecting something big. And then we got into the second night, like, this, the same song at the beginning of the concert. Like, this was really... This got me, like, sad in somehow. Yeah, like like the same process from before. Like yeah, I believe like, I believe it was the same lore for the second night. I I can't confirm that because I couldn't find video of it because it's insanely hard to find fan cams of Baby Metal's huge shows because they prohibit recording. But thanks to the brave spirits, you do record it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the lore was oh three newly born metal spirits summoned them to the metalverse and they they already knew each other. By the time that happened, like, okay, great. Like, we, like, 
I don't like I don't know, Kill, but like like we know how that happened because they went like, they went to the same place. They all went to Sakuragakuins, and they and Momo was an Avenger for how many for how many years? So it's like they knew each other. Uh, yeah, and Momo was a big fan of Baby Metal back at Sakuragakuin days. So, so let's be clear. So like I don't know, Kill, but your lore is kind of falling apart here. Yeah, it is. Um, but I think he's like he doesn't know what he's writing anymore. He but, doesn't know. But he's just doing it. But uh, the 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 only the only thing that the, but the like the thing that bothers me is that you know like I keep like I like we said already no new outfits no special entrance for Momo. Nothing. Okay, we had we had Nothing we had, Momo. we had different we had slightly different lore to begin to begin the concert, uh, and no stage props either. Like. I was watching part of Legend S, and Legend S had the stage, but they had fox heads around the stage. We didn't have that. Like, why couldn't we have something like that? It just looked like a traditional. It just looked like a traditional. It almost just looked like a traditional concert. Uh, no, nothing big, nothing too major. Nothing that feels like a birthday, at anniversary live that Baby Metal do. No, it didn't. It doesn't feel like one. It didn't scream BB Metal Pro Shot to me. It certainly did not scream BB Metal Pro Shot, because uh, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, Pro Shot has props. It has uh, new songs, different, uh, you know, just props for the stage. Yeah, props for like stage. back at the Clear Night uh, concert, we had like the little O's at the stage, which was like beautiful, and I was like expecting something like that, even an M. The stage, like, and with the Nam would be good, but we got like nothing. Or just something like a, and this brings me to the lore of Night of Twenty One, but something like a peach, or just like a giant peach on stage, yeah. like just do something related to. Be so good, the peach, please. <laughs> just do something. Mama being crucified in a peach. <laughs> please, listen to me. Just do something, and then, oh, okay, okay. So I guess we should move on to Night of Twenty One, talking about crucifixion. Uh. Well, should we move on? To, wait, should we move on to Knife Twenty One first, or should we move on to the Momo Banger lore? Let's go to the Momo Banger lore. All right. So before we, yeah, let's, I guess let's, we should finish out Knife Twenty first. Okay. So talking about Knight of Twenty. Okay. So talking about the Momo Banger lore. This is when we got the good lore. Uh, yeah. This is when we got the good lore of the night. The you know the lore to begin a concert kind of lackluster. Just gonna say. The, so the Momo Banger lore. This is this is when we got the good one, and this lore I knew from this lore that it was that the next song was headbanger, like halfway through reading this lore. So if we read the lore, it was the moment when another new legend was born among the many existent legends many years ago. The stream of meteors shone in the twilight zone where the western sky was changing from orange to pink. Eventually, the meteors shifted from the west to the east and landed on this land where a new messiah was born. No matter how many hardships she faced, she was like the sun, shining a bright light. And tonight, just like in the legends of many messiahs, her black hair was splendidly disheveled, and the hundred flower, pe flower petals that bloomed, and is destined to disappear forever. The time has come to engrave in our lives the last bravery of those twenty knights that will never come back. The last sentence is a might be a little off from the original lore. The video was hard to make out the audio of, but uh, yes. uh, so that so th so this is when we finally when BB Mel finally started confirming that Momo's color is pink because yes, um, she was to do Momo banger. She was lowered from the from the ceiling of the arena right into the middle platform. And, uh, the, you know, the lore reads that, uh, she, what, I guess, like, she, I guess she came from meteors or something like that? Yeah, she came from meteors. Meteors, she, yeah. she came from pink meteors. Uh, yeah, that's why the Legend MM symbol is meteor. 
it's something really cute. So, uh, I mean, that was, that, that, that was better lore. I mean, that lore, other than the part where, where they're talking about her hair, that lore should have been the lore to start the concert. Exactly. That lore made me cry like a newborn. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It made me cry like <laughs> never before. But the reason why I... The reason why I knew that lore was talking about headbanger is, do you know the like the true meaning of headbanger? Yeah, I know. Because headbanger is a song. It's a song that it's a song about someone, a girl turning fifteen, and fifteen is supposedly a big age in Japan. It's a song. It's an age where like you, I guess it's like kind of like sixteen here in America. It's like an. It's like a big. It's just a big age in Japan, but. Headbanger talks about their hair. Uh, the translation is for the very first line of Headbanger is with the legendary black long hair disordered around and gorgeously blooming crazy. This flower will soon disappear fruitlessly. Take that first sentence and then read the sentence of her black hair was splendidly disheveled and the hundred flower petals that bloomed. And it's destined to disappear forever. Word like like word for word like the like the first two lines of Headbanger is that lore. Yeah, it was so beautiful. So like, at the minute they talked about hair, I'm like, oh, this is Headbanger. And then after when they were, then when the lore was being shown on the screen, it it showed the picture of the album cover for a single for when they released Headbanger as a single. But instead of it, instead of Sue being in it, it was Momo being in it. I'm like, oh, well, that just makes it blatantly obvious what this song's gonna be. Like, Legend M, they kind of hid the fact that they were gonna hand the mic off to Moa. Legend M, M, they did not hide that fact at all. And uh, can we talk about? Can we talk about? Can we talk about Momo Metal's duality? Can we just talk about? Yes, that? we should. Can we, we should. We definitely should. Can we talk about that for a minute? Uh. I don't know how you go from growling to cutesy vocals. I don't. Her vocals are like the cutest ever. I wasn't <laughs> expecting the girls. When she started, I, I just would jump off my bed. It was like 6 a.m. here for me. And I was like screaming. I was like, oh my god, Momo Metal, go girl, give us everything. But, okay. Go girl, show us. <laughs> Why you're here? But when Momo when Momo first joined BB Metal, did anyone ever have on the docket? Did anyone ever think that she would be the so called harsh vocalist of the group? Did Did anyone ever think Baby Metal could have a harsh vocalist? She's she's like she's she has the power of Baby Metal. Like she's the real living Baby Metal. Like Baby Metal is supposed to be cute and metal. And yeah. when you look at Momo, she's cute. And then she do Me- the girls. She's 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 metal. Yeah, she's the most metal of all the metals. Yeah, she- <laughs> yeah, she's the most metal of them. Because uh, I can't imagine Sue growling. I can't imagine Moa growling. But like Momo, like okay, like the one I would imagine. So I don't know. Like I don't know. Like I know I didn't watch a whole lot of Sekiro Gakuin, but uh, Momo growling. I would ne- I would have never expected that. And and you know ever ever since. Before they re- before Metalli was released back in August, I never expected Momo to be a to be a harsh vocalist. Never never expected that. Nope. And uh, like, as a Sakuraga Queen fan, I never expected that <laughs> when I first listened to Metalli and she growled. I was like, "Girl, what? Yeah. God, when? Yeah, are you? <laughs> yeah, the are you ready?" Who corrupted my girl? Who told you this? Now, oh my god! Now the criticism they've received for are the "Are You Ready?" part in the Metali live uh, and the live versions are that is that part is backtracked in. So I do think it is her on the recording, but that part is backtracked in uh, for every show they do. Live. But the growls for Momo Banger, I think I think part of them had to be live. It's just I think I, they have like a backtrack, but she was doing live, but really, really like not that loud. I, I she was doing it, but not loud. I mean, you can, you can, you can not be loud and have the have the sound guy crank your audio up. 
But uh, like I don't know, like cause she she growled like twice when she did the head head up banker. That was a growl. But before that, before she I started was. singing, she looked like she was like whoa, whoa, whoa. something like that. Yeah. And, um, and I don't I, like I don't know how I can like I don't think that part was lo- I don't I don't think that part was backtracked. I think like I I'm hoping I'm hoping that part was not backtracked. I'm hoping the growl she did right before she started singing was not backtracked. That's the only thing I'm hoping for. Like, if that was not backtracked, then Baby Metal has found themselves a harsh vocalist. And, like, the next album they produce, like, they could... Gra- it's, going to be, it's going to be crazy. Imagine imagine Kawaii Metal, but with growls in it. Like, imagine, like, we can truly have two... Me- like, tr- like, metal truly... Like, Kawa- Kawaii Metal truly form into something else. Imagine we could have like solos of the girls, and then the Momo solo would be like the real kawaii metal. Yeah. Like just her being the cutest girl alive, and then girls scream. <laughs> but like the thing, the, the, like the like, but how does she like transition from right from the the, the deep growls to just like the cutest voice uh, you have ever heard? <laughs> like she has the cutest, most beautiful voice of all time. It's like it's 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 hers. Like I don't know who taught her to grow. I don't know, but thank God you taught her. Do you think? Thank God I needed to see this. I needed to. Do you think she was just in a studio one day and just like did it randomly and people were like, oh my gosh, she can growl. That's good. Like she can growl. Let's try it again. I I think that really happened. Like I think like it really happened. Like I don't like I don't know if she was taught it or she was just in the booth one day. Uh, maybe when they were, I guess it would have to be when, when she was in the booth when they were recording Metalli because she's not on, uh, she's not on the album for the other one. So like she had to be in a booth when they were recording Metalli and she just like started like just like maybe just like practicing her metal growl, thinking like maybe she like maybe thinking no one could hear her and then it's like Koba or one of the producers he uh, hears and it's like oh my gosh, oh my gosh you have yeah. you can't do this. You, Go, girl. Please. You can grab. But I think, I think someone, like, the girl part, I think someone had to do it, like, at, when they were recording it, and all the girls tried, and then when Momo tried, they were like, oh my god, you're the perfect one. Yeah. You, you, you had to do this. Yeah. Because, like, two girls, but not like Momo. Yeah. Like, Momo does a little bit, but just not like Momo. Yeah. Momo is like she goes real deep. Yes. She knows how. To. Yes, Momo can go deep. I don't think Momo or Sue can go deep. Momo, Momo is the cute girl. <laughs> yeah. The high one. <laughs> um. But anyway, it's just like I don't know. Like, Baby Metal never had never had that so called. I I call it do du- I call it a duality. Mo- Mo- they never had that. They never had that to them. And it's just like, okay, we got that now. And I think if they utilize it correctly in their next album, I think their next album could could be huge. It will be huge. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So they will like go back to that Kawaii metal. Yeah, go back to the Kawaii metal, but make it more like what Passcode releases. Uh where Passcode has a yeah, cute or more like I don't know, I would really want to see like more songs like Catch Me if you can. Yeah. Maybe with Momo growling. Maybe catch me if you can with Momo growls. Oh my God! Yes, this is start. <laughs> yes, yes. Um. Okay, so moving on to the night of twenty one lore, I couldn't find video for that, so I'm assuming the lore was the same. Uh, I think to... the starting lore, the starting lore is the, is the same. I'm pretty uh, sure. Well, well, no. Uh, one once it releases, I believe, like. April 27th, I want to say. I think Night 2 comes out on Wow Wow Stream. Yeah. Uh, but we got Momotar lore. Now, the Momotar lore I found, there were some parts that I could not transcribe because people were yelling and the audio like quality was not that great. But the Momotaro lore was something else. Yeah, it was. It was. Have you heard the lore yet? Yes, I did. For Momotaro? Yes. So, all right, so here's the lore. A long, long time ago, on March 3rd... In, the voice, Trev. The voice. I, I listened to it. He didn't really do the voice. It was more of a happy voice. Oh, you had to. You 
voice. Yeah, but, yeah, but the voice is more of a happy voice than the deep voice. All right, all right. A long time ago, on March 3rd. See, the, the lore read a lot quicker than how I'm reading it now. I'm just saying, it, if you want to keep it accurate. <laughs> A long, long time ago, on March 3rd, in Middle Village, bustling with people, working amongst inaudible, the girls' festival, there was a huge peach that stood out among the cute something decorations. The boys and girls of Middle Village worked together to lift a huge peach. A big metal baby was born from inside. Let the inaudible grow from the peach. An audible metal heart and the inaudible... Goes on a journey to exterminate demons with two metal heroes. So, there are about six parts in that where I couldn't make out a couple words. But we, yeah. we kind of, but we kind of got the, we kind of got the gist of it. Uh, we got the message. We got, we was, got it. was Momo Metal the one born inside a big giant peach? That, yes. that's, <laughs> that's the real question, like... Okay, but what? Okay, but what's her lore then? Is, did she come to Earth from a meteor, or did she come from Earth from, or was she born from a giant peach? What's what? Kova, Kova, please do something. What? I mean, we're gonna. I mean, as soon as it's released, uh, we should have a clear. We'll have a clear audio of the lore, so then we can actually have the real answer. But like, or did the peach come from the sky as a meteor? I, I think I. Oh my god, this this would be so cute. This would be so cute. Like, like please, Trev, you had to do it. <laughs> oh my god. But uh, what's her lore then? Was she born from a giant peach, or did she come from the sky in a meteor from an asteroid? What is it? Koba. Koba. Please. I I think he's tired. <laughs> I think he did lore like all almost sleepy. You know, because he's an old guy, he needs to sleep. <laughs> he has heart problems, he needs to take his time. <laughs> but, like, you know, what is it? Like, it, it's cute lore. Like, they went, they kind of went from, like, the mysterious Metal Galaxy lore to just something. They went back to the cute lore, which I don't think they've had for a while. Yeah. You know, at least eight, six years, maybe. They went to, like, they went back to kind of, like, the cute lore of it. Like, oh, she was born from a huge. Giant Peach, like, who comes up with this stuff anyway? <laughs> um, to, and then goes on a journey to exterminate demons with two metal heroes. So I assume the two metal he heroes are Moa and Sue. And then they go on a journey to exterminate demons. And then, it's and then after that, it started with Momo once again coming down from the ceiling. And singing Metataro, Momo, singing Metataro, we call it, now I guess everyone calls it Momo Taro now because it's her song now, uh, singing uh, Moa and Yui's part to start Metataro because she didn't sing the whole song because Sue took over on the vocals after her, but she started by singing both parts, uh, so that was pretty, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um. Anyway, so, I mean, so that's it for the lore. Uh, so we only, ha we only had two intervals of lore, both concerts. Uh, the the Momo Banger lore was pretty good. The, the, the Momo Taro lore is pretty good. Uh, they went back to the cutesy lore, which I don't, I don't really have a problem with. And then... Uh, I was missing it, actually. <laughs> I was really miss missing it. But because back at that time... I could understand the lore back at that time when it started the galaxy lores. I just well, there's just so much there's so much lore that I have to get caught up on. I have to relearn that it's gonna yeah. it's gonna take me forever. But you know, I'm gonna keep. I'm starting from this concert. I'm starting to keep track of the lore because the lore before this was the lore from Baby Metal Begins. Before that, it was the lore from Baby Metal Returns. Or it, before it, before begins was the lore from the other one, the, their concept album. Then before that was the lore from BB Mill Return. So as soon as I read on the early lore, then it's easy to get caught up. It'll be easy to get caught up on the lore. But we have to. We have. <laughs> we have to. We have to get caught up on the lore. Uh. So other than that, I mean, any other thoughts on on this concert? Like I said, I thought 
I thought the stage production and the production of the concert was a bit of a letdown. I thought the songs are great. I thought Momo was great. Momo, of course, was the highlight of both nights. She was the highlight uh, for Momo Banger, the highlight for Momo Taro. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting, I was not expecting her to growl for Headbanger. I was just not expecting that. And she growl, did she growl for, for Meta Taro? I think she did. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. The, the growl. Yeah, she did. She did. So, like, I think that's hinting that they're going to use that a lot more go- moving forward. Like, maybe, like, maybe Momo wants to take on more of a, take on more roles as a, doing vocals. Maybe more than Moa does. So, like, I think they might utilize that moving forward. And one thing to note is that the girls kind of seem more free. Uh, just to kind of move around on stage for this show. And, like, interact with the fans. Yeah, and interact with fans, which you never see for pro shots. Pro shots, they can't interact with anyone, which is I don't I, I I get that because they're recording it on camera and they only have one shot to get the shots. You know, they only have one chance to get the shots they need, and if they don't have a flattering camera angle of the girls, uh, then they're kind of screwed in how they make a con- how they put the video together for a concert, uh, for the for a blue for a uh, pro shot release. If the girls like started talking with the fans, it would be really cute to see like the girls interacting yeah. and sending hearts and smiling to everyone. It would be really cute. Yeah, like they always do for every other show they do. That's not a pro shot. Um, yeah. and then and then like I, of course the live streams were uh, were horrible for both concerts. So like I don't know how the much. Second night was like better. Too. It was better up until they got cut off around song seven. Starlight. Yeah, do we get? Uh, when did it get cut off? Starlight or Brand New Day? Starlight. It got. Yeah. Starlight got cut off and then stopped. That's right, it did because I remember I had I was reporting on the concert just based on the tweets from people who were there. Uh, before we end end the segment, the other big thing was Karate came back, uh, which we all thought was, which we all thought was retired after they did Karate both nights for BB Metal Begins with metalverse um yes the theory among some fans at the time were any songs they do with metalverse means it's going to be be retired from bb metal and it's going to be continued only through metalverse because metalverse uh during the first couple concerts uh they did doki doki morning and they did karate at their own concerts yeah and we thought okay these songs are retired because i guess they're too kawaii and they're just going to be metal verse songs only. But then, you know, we got the surprise of... Yeah, Doki Doki. Morning. Bo- karate. Yeah. And metal Turtle, which is like the kawaii <laughs> yeah. of them all. Yeah, and it's just like... Okay, Doki Doki Morning, I was shocked that came back. I Like, that was... Like... I, I was in shock that Syncopation that was, was back. Doki, uh, just when Doki Doki Morning came back, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this for this concert to, for this pro shot to come out because that song is going to sound amazing live it always does sound but amazing live i really need the live versions on spotify because we <laughs> could hear momoko singing all of the songs she was singing live guys she was singing live like after what <laughs> how, i don't know how much she's finally singing live and having like her spotlight that she deserves especially in doki 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 you can hear like better her voice because her voice is more like a cute voice and with moa sounds really cute so i think we need the both concerts on spotify with momoko live version please thank you yeah we need we, we need both nights uh well we need like every live concert every every live album they put out to be put on spotify uh because at least for america that's kind of sp- it's kind of sparse. We have one live one from 2016. We have uh, ten B- ten ten BB Metal Budokan, and we have Legend Metal Galaxy, both nights. Like, and I think that's it for live real. for live albums on Spotify. Yeah, let's be real. I think I thought that BB Metal was going to record everything again, just like Taylor Swift is doing right now. Uh. Like, I- I thought they were going to do this. They need to do this, actually. 
I can <laughs> since I I listen to Momo singing, I can I can't do this anymore. It, it's not it's not the same. That would be nice. I, I that would be nice. I would like them to re-record every song they they've ever done. Also, but also put the Western comedy band in the studio instead of having drum machines on the songs. Yeah. But like I. I, like I don't think, albums, yeah, maybe. But like, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I just think that's gonna cost too much money and take too much time to re-record re every song they've ever done. Uh, I, 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 and why? But my question is, why would they do that? Their the the production on our live albums are so good that just release it release a live album of the best of your live albums or something like that, like the best live baby metal songs from our past from like from our past every concert like like release best of your live albums i mean like because the live albums because the live albums just like the live albums are just better are better than the studio version so like you know i don't really yeah, think that like i don't like so i think it's for that reason why koba doesn't want to record uh re-record re re all their songs which i don't which i don't mind that it's just like Make their live albums more accessible for international fans. If if Legend MM don't go to the Spotify, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will like scream and shout and I don't know, <laughs> die. Cause since I listen to Momoko singing, like singing, she's really singing. My whole life changed. I need it somehow. The live versions, new versions, I I. I don't care, Koba. You have to do this somehow. Just do it. Okay. Um, and then, so I think that was all we have to say about Legend MM. Like I said, I loved I loved both set list. I loved Momo. Uh, Momo Momo Taro was the biggest shock of them all. But other than that, like I said, this the the state the production I think was a bit lackluster. Uh, the fact that yeah. the sacred treasure was the sacred treasure was cool, but like, okay, what concert? What big con what bands like don't feature wristbands that light up? Like, and when we see like the the treasure for Sue Metal, we have three, seven, yeah, three, <laughs> yeah, yeah, three, three of them, three, and now we just have one that people are uh, selling overpriced online. Exactly, <laughs> really overpriced, yeah. y'all. Like, really. Maybe Legend Forty Three will bring will will bring some of our predictions we originally made. Yeah, like as a, as I said, like the 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 fans' predictions are like really wild. Yeah. Like please, Koba, <laughs> bring one fan to do one concert. Like please, we have a lot of fans on Twitter that actually made a really good concert only with predictions, insane predictions maybe, but they were predictions. Like, Koba didn't do much for Momo. Let's be real here. I think he was tired. He just <laughs> made a normal stage. And I, I think he let Momo do the set list, I think. It's like something that I think about. I think Momo did the set list. And then she did uh, some of the merch, which is good. So cute. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I didn't get that one. Produced, I didn't get that one. It said, what, produced by Momo Metal? Like, how, like, was it, like, what, like, because it was, what, it was socks? It was a hair, it was a hair it clip. Was socks, hair, clip was hair clip. And there was something else, yeah. I, I believe. Was it, was that it, or was there something else? I think, I think we only have the socks and the hair things. I can't remember anything else. And then we have the t shirt with the peaches, which is the cutest of them all. And if you want to buy them, um, you have to know that they are like really overpriced, just because yeah. they have peaches. Yeah, but like, so, but like, my question is: Did Momo like was it just her idea to have a hair clip, or like, it's like was it her idea to slap the the logo on a hair? Like, what do like what do you mean? I think, like, I think she had the idea like, oh, let's do a hair clip, and then Koba said, okay, leave it to me. Like and then it also said this. It also said the socks were I produced by socks, her. Momo like really did. Momo really did the socks, but I don't think the head pins Momo like did. Like I think she only did did like the, her sign, her autograph, and that's that's all. But like, Momo did the rest. But like, 
it's just like it just I, I don't imagine Momo like just being a one designing socks th- designing socks uh on, on a computer maybe she did she would. she's she's such a cutie i think she would she would like sit down one day and design the socks yeah like i can imagine her like coming to Kobo with the socks the drawing of the socks like i want this please i want this and then Kobo like just okay let's do it um yeah uh so anyway moving on from legend m and we have to talk about this the interview that was released after Legend MM on Japanese uh, television. Now I'm now fortunately I found a transcription of it and it was a pretty it was only a two minute like around two minute interview and it was a pretty good interview. I mean they said a lot of the things they they always say. Now I don't think they said only the Fox God knows. I don't think they I don't think they ever said that. I don't remember. Oh but, my god, is it the first time? Well, they didn't. They they usually say it when they they usually say it when their interviews are like in English or like for English audiences, or audiences that know English, I should say. But then I don't think they say it in Japan. Maybe they did say it in, in Japanese. Maybe maybe they did. I mean, I could look. Maybe they did. Uh, let's see. I can find it. And we we got like the the colors for the girls, right? We got the colors. <laughs> Yeah, we got the colors. Like, Momo is pink, Sue oh, is red, and Moa, is as I remember, is blue. Blue. Because uh, really when I watched the interview, when Moa speaks... Uh, so the interview had the subtitles in Japanese at the bottom of the screen, and they were white subtitles with a glow of a color around them. So Sue Sue's subtitles had a glow of red around them. Moa's subtitles had the glow of blue around them, and then Momo's subtitles had the glow of pink around them. And when they do like the presentation, the appears like the names like Momo Meadow in pink, and then Sue Meadow in red, and Moa Meadow yeah. in blue. Yeah, and it's really cute actually. And just looking at the interview, they did not end the they did not end the interview by saying only the Fox got news. They're free. So like. That that's shocker, but uh, that's a shock. So uh, Mo- Moa, of course, talked about how younger people are going to see them, which he talked about before in previous interviews. Uh, Momo Metal uh, said the concert felt like uh, felt like everyone, the audience, was helping produce a concert together, um, and she felt really special with that. But the main quote I want to focus on is what Sue said. Okay, so. First of all, Sue said this quote. This is translated from Japanese. We've always wanted people who've been listening to metal for a long time to recognize us as this is also metal. This is also real metal. Yes. Um. So, Sue, Sue's kind of calling out the metal, metal elitists there. Yes, she is. <laughs> I'm saying, and kind of slapping at the oldies that say baby metal is not metal. Yeah, she's kind of. She's kind of slate here. Yeah, she's kind of calling out the metal idiots that says, "Oh, baby metal is not real metal," and she's like, "Uh, this is also real metal." This is real metal. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing was, uh, the question they were talking about baby metal's future. What's the future for baby metal? And she said this, which I think is the most interesting quote of the entire interview. I wonder if our time has come. It sounds a bit exaggerated, but I feel like I'm starting to realize it little by little. Now, what do you mean by that? You know, the quote, you know, she was talking about if she was, if she was ever asked, like she was like talking, like if she was ever asked the question, has your, has baby metal's time come? And she was like, I want, I wonder if our time has come, uh, it sounds exaggerated, but I feel like I'm starting to realize it little by little, but like, what do you mean by, a, you know, you're starting to realize that maybe your time has come? Yeah, that's really depressing, actually. Like, I, like, I know baby metal probably can't last forever as much as we want it to last forever, but like. Your time has come. Your time has come for what, though, Sue? Uh, is she starting to realize? The time has come to stand up. 
That's what she was trying to say. And then after she said that, she said, I hope to become a presence that can lead the new metal scene from now on. So, uh... Uh, I mean, baby metal has been leading a new metal scene, whether they realize it or not. I mean, they've been leading the metal scene from Japan. Uh, the Japanese heavy metal scene, whether they realize that or not, it, it, they, they, maybe they, you know, maybe she's talking sense of leading the kawaii metal scene. But like, if it wasn't for BB metal in Japan, like, I don't think metal music would be as bit popular as it is. And I don't think it certainly would have sparked some of the other Japanese heavy metal bands that fans have grew to love, like Nemophila, Love Bites. Uh, now, without the early work and the early foundation, BB metal set for the middle scene in Japan. Mm-hmm. But that was the, that was like the only, those were the only two interesting lines uh, from that interview. But yeah, just a one, I wonder if our time has come. That sounds a bit exaggerated, but I feel I'm starting to realize it little by little. Like, I, like I, it was an interview where like, they were little. They like they were more free to give like real answers in an interview than ever before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they're like finally saying what they want to say. Because before, like, their the interviews were because before, like, interviews are like baby metal interviews are almost always published um, through some publication, like through some magazine, where you have to read. You know, you read question answer question answer question answer. And we the ra- the rare TV interviews they do or the rare video uh, interviews they do it's usually the the questions are somewhat pre-selected uh, or they have to be approved uh, and these questions were like these answers like sounded like these they, these sounded like honest answers not like some old cliche answer that they would normally give yeah. Um, so anyway, that's our thoughts. That's, that's my thoughts on that interview because like, I thought that was a really interesting quote from Sue talking about their future. I'm now, really of course, talking about like yeah. Wants to talk. yeah, now of course, uh, it was left extremely, uh, other than that, like it was left extremely vague. Oh, we want to be the force, the presence that can lead a new middle scene. Like that was extremely vague, but the, just that one sentence, I think, uh, I think was a sentence that, uh, that caught my eye, at least. Mm-hmm. Me too. Anyway, I think uh, I think that'll do it for episode two. Yeah. So I want to thank you, everyone, for listening. We will be back next week. You can find our socials. They have been on screen the whole time here. Uh, so follow me on Twitter. Follow Anna on Twitter. And we will be back next week. Bye-bye. See you. See you.